I think it's fair to say that we all have an internal struggle when it comes to fall. For me, winter kind of just drags and you can't wait till it gets warm. Uh, but then you kind of forget about winter because you look forward to fall so much. And the weather here is changing a little bit. We've got one more heat wave on the way and I think we're in the clear. And uh, what better way to prepare for that than with a set of um, fall crafts. Today we're gonna make a uh, falling leaves topiary. Uh, last year we made a topiary as well. This is completely different, but very cool. And I hope that it finds a place on uh, your dining room table or somewhere in your home. Anyway, let's take a look at what we have here. Now I did, uh, I did some different things um, for this project. And first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the inking on the leaves. Okay, so let me, these, these are the sample ones that I'm gonna do, and I'm not actually gonna do all of them because the process is pretty much the same no matter which leaf you're working on. Uh, but I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I did. And for those of you that follow us in the official group on Facebook, um, I mentioned that I was in the studio yesterday doing some prep work for all the files. So each of the leaves here, they actually come with a stencil, okay? Now the stencil is shaped exactly like the actual leaf, except it has the veins cut out of it, okay? And we're gonna use that to actually paint in, or draw in, or ink in, or in my case, spray, airbrush, the, um, the actual veins in. So, what you'll notice is that the uh, the actual leaves that are the template or the stencil for the veining, they have a uh, numeral on there. This is the number two, okay? Now, these are the ones that I used yesterday. Here's my other number two. This one is a number three. This is a number one, okay? And uh, this is helpful as well because this will tell you what order to actually apply these onto your topiary. So one is the first layer, two, three, four, and so on and so on. Anyway, so I kind of did some experimenting yesterday with, uh, you know, with different methods and, and different strategies. I used inks, I used markers, and I found what I liked the best, but I'm gonna give you a few options. Oh, also, I just wanted to show you, again, there's stencils for every layer, okay? And when you're done with the stencils, you can discard them. We're not gonna need them. They look really pretty though, because they've, uh, they've done a good job being stencils. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so for the first layer, you're gonna obviously just, you, all you wanna do is just group the similar leaves together, and they're all gonna go on in the corresponding layer. And obviously you wanna go ahead and ink. I also did some embossing on these. But let me show you a couple things that you can do uh, as far as the inking goes and the veining. So what I did, I'll show you my first method, is this literally took the stencil and a friend of mine, I believe it was Yoli and Jan Hunter, they sent me this e-brush. Uh, it's by Craftwell. I don't know if they make it anymore. I think they do. But I have a Sharpie and the e-brush comes with a bunch of these adapters for various markers. And I found one that fits my Sharpies. It's all I had on hand and I just figured I'd give it a shot and you just kind of pop it in. I have it plugged in and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And it's kind of loud so I apologize. And all I did was just kind of put the stencil on there and you can see when you hit the button, it really just sprays out the color. And it does kind of, oh, this thing almost fell off the table, it's vibrating. It does kind of come out splotchy, but as long as you get the right coverage. There we go, let me turn that off. Okay, so if you have an airbrush, obviously that works very well and looks really nice. Okay, but chances are you may not have one. If you do, which I think a lot of people actually do, that is one way of doing it, okay? Now, uh, another method is to just put your stencil on and just grab uh, your ink. 
And I've got my ink applicators that I use uh, very regularly. And I'm gonna grab some orange ink. Let me see if I can match this color. That's a little bit different, but that's fine. Whatever you have is gonna work just fine. Now remember, this is, this is an autumn project. So, uh, and then literally just kind of hold the stencil down and just start rubbing on the inside. Okay, and I found that this method actually gives me a very nice, crisp vein. Okay, so, I mean, you don't have to do the veining, but I would really recommend it because I think it's gonna look really sharp when it's done. Any little extra detail that you can add is gonna be fantastic. Okay, so here's another method, obviously, and just kind of rubbing the ink pad onto the stencil in the little gaps or in the stencil area and voila I'm gonna pop it off and there's your vein okay so uh, where'd my other one go there it is so you can see the difference and it's literally just a difference of color both methods work just fine and of course if you want um, I don't I don't know how well I mean I kind of messed around with this a little bit um, I think that using just a straight marker might put down maybe too much ink. So I would probably just use the second method that I talked about, but you could definitely go in and color it if you want. And that should work too. Okay, so this is gonna be a little more work, I think, especially considering how many leaves there are. So I would probably just do the, the second method, the inking method with an applicator if you don't have an airbrush gun. Okay, but you can see that it, it works just fine. Uh, or if you don't wanna use the stencil, of course, you can just try to just draw the veins like we did on the poinsettia, poinsettia planter. That works too. Okay. And I mean, you could even get super crazy and maybe even use some acrylic paints or something. But you can tell there that when I just use a Sharpie, the edges are not as crisp. And that's okay too, you know, but you can see the comparison there. There's the airbrush, that's the inking, and that was with a pencil, or I'm sorry, with a, a marker. Anyway, so once you get the veining done on all these, um, I've got a little, I'm gonna go through all of these and let you know kind of what colors we used. I'm gonna discard these because I'm already, I am already have all those done. Uh, for these that are connected, you just do the same thing. They're just connected. And then we'll show you why they're connected here in a little bit, but you're just gonna do the same thing, okay? It's just that they're connected on a little band and that is to help you with placement and um, spacing. Okay, so let me grab this guy here and on layer two, which is, this is a, it looks like a maple leaf to me. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, we're gonna do, let me see, this is, that's two. We're gonna do, so with each of these leaves, um, so I've got the orange here. Actually, I'm gonna put that on my little, on my little applicator here. And I'm gonna get some, Get some ink on there. I was going through ink like crazy yesterday. Rub some of that off. And because, you know, this is fall, you could totally get a little wackier with your inking. You don't have to be as precise. So I'm not using, I'm not doing it by hand like I usually do it where I just hold this in my hand. Because um, I actually like the way that this comes out. It's a little more gets a little more coverage, it's a little more random. The gradient is a lot nicer. I'm just kind of doing a circular motion here, just working on the edges and every so often kind of creeping inward a little bit. Okay. I was going out with my table. <clears throat> okay, so just kind of inking the edges and then take a look at it. And I think that looks great. You can see the nice little contrast, or the little, uh, not contrast, but gradient thing effect that's happening there. 
All right, so there's the edge. And then to really take this over the top with this one, so the vein and the outer edge uh, is the same color. It's a nice orange. And then I'm going to take a little bit of red, like a dark red, or it could be a, a light red, whatever. And I'm just gonna go around this and I'm just gonna hit random spots with a little bit of red. Okay, just here and there. Just to kind of uh, make it look random and more realistic. Okay, so I'm gonna make it a little heavier down here. And maybe down here, I want a lot of nice red. And you know, the red and the orange, when they blend, they kind of go a little brown, which is fine. Because if you've ever just kind of looked at leaves, you know that you know they're having a tough time not making that chlorophyll. And uh, it's really getting to them, but the beautiful colors show through. So you can see the difference there now by just hitting that with a little bit of red. Now you can experiment and you know try different reds. Uh, maybe you want a, there's a, uh, there's a specific um, maple tree called the Autumn Blaze that I really love. And um, it's kind of actually more like this color. Okay, so I mean, we can go in and find a, like a deeper red, or not a deeper red, but a brighter red and you know, hit it with that. And you can see what that's starting to look like. Uh, I would probably, just for the sake of simplicity, keep it to you know, just one color for the little dabbing that I'm doing here to kind of accent some of the sections. But you can go as crazy as you want, obviously. Anyway, so that is kind of what that's gonna look like. Um, now you'll notice that in our final version here, there's a nice texture on this as well. And that is a uh, embossing folder. It's called, I think we call it Crackle. I don't know if that's what it's actually called, but it's this, it's by Derice. I just wanna show it to you here. Uh, I might need to put it on. I don't know how you're gonna see that. Here, let's, uh, let's put a dark color in there so you can kind of see the texture. There you go, you can see that pretty well. Uh, I'll try to find a link to that so you can find it in case you want to uh, you know, run that through your embosser. I'm not, I don't have my embosser handy, but let me see if I can, uh, well, let me just get the embossing machine real quick so I can show you what that looks like. It's out. So, there's my embossing machine. So for those of you that have not worked with an embosser, the texture, you want, if you want it to rise up, you want to make sure that it's underneath your project. You can't even see what I'm doing right now. So here's the textured part. This is kind of like the negative. If you want the texture to be on top, you want to make sure that the texture on the actual embossing folder is under your project. You close that up and put it between your, uh, your plates here. Mine kind of slipped out. And, excuse me, Mr. Inks, you just run it through. Okay, let's move that out of the way. And then we have a nice leaf with some beautiful texture on it now. Okay, so that's what I did with all of them. Again, you don't have to do all that, but uh, it'll look really cool if you do. Okay, so. Let's just go through all the leaves here and I'll kind of give you some, um, some info on what I did to each one in case you want to mimic it. Uh, let me get rid of this stuff real quick here. I just don't wanna ruin anything. Okay, so our oak leaves here, you can see there's two on a band and then there's four individual ones. We did a, this is on a yellow cardstock. So I did a green vein. I inked with my, with this guy all the way around with a green. And then I just hit it with a little bit of a, um, actually, was that brown? No, this, this is actually orange. 
and you can see that the orange is more prominent in some areas, but because orange and green, when they mix, they kind of turn brown. So depending on how little or how much you put on, it's gonna kind of change the tint a little bit. So again, green vein, green outer edge ink, and then an orange on the tips here and there. Okay, so that's for layer one. And layer two is the maple leaf that we just did. So let's get those. I can tell you exactly how many there are and what you need to do with them. There's a lot of beautiful leaves here. So there's two on strips and then there are four individual ones. Okay, again with this one, I did an orange or if you have a dark yellow for the vein, uh, dark yellow or orange for the outside. And then I hit the tips with, um, actually in this case, I did it with a dark, or actually or like a red. And that's why I got these nice browns that came out here, okay? All right, so layer three, which one is layer three? Layer three is this guy here. Okay, so again, we've got two that are on a little band, and then we have four individual ones. And for this one, uh, we did um, orange, again, in the center for the veining, and then I hit the outside with an orange, as well as uh, a, like a rusty or red color to get this effect. Of course, again, everything's embossed, okay? And the next layer we have is this layer here, this beautiful red layer. Now we have one strip on a band and then four individuals, okay? This was inked with a red for the veins, okay? And then also red on the outside. And I hit the edges here randomly with a little bit of purple. Okay, so that is that. And the next layer here is this beautiful little leaf. And for the inside on the vein, I did a purple, okay? And then I also um, did a reddish purple on the perimeter, and then I hit the, um, you know, just subtle tones of a purple again. And then finally, this last little, this last little piece here, uh, this was uh, actually done in a blue for the veins, blue on the outside as well. And actually, I'm sorry, um, the veins are blue, I did purple on the outside and then just hints of, uh, hints of blue are all around, okay? So that's that. Now let me get my inks out of here real quick and we can start putting the topiary together. So again, you wanna go ahead and make sure that you get all your leaves nice and prepped so that we can just go ahead and begin assembling the actual topiary itself, okay? Okay, so in your supply list, you have this little cone that I believe we got at Joann's. It's made by Art Minds. We have um, all the dimensions and everything in the supply list. You're going to need to get one of these, <clears throat> okay? And what we've done is we've created this little template, okay? And what we're going to do is, and we don't have to glue this on, we're just going to wrap this around and hold it down as far as it goes at the bottom. And you see these little slits here. We're going to use these to kind of mark the horizontal sections as to where the leaves are gonna be placed. Okay, so I've got a pencil here and I'm just gonna hold this down. And once I have, once I'm sure that it's kind of flush with the bottom, I can kind of work my way up a little bit and just kind of run my pencil through that mark. Okay, and then just kind of move your way, scoot your way up and mark that next section and then just kind of work your way up. Okay, it's okay if you kind of mess up here and there, it's not a big deal. Just make sure you hold it nice and tight. Okay, so there we go. Okay, those are the different layers and that's where we're gonna position each layer. Now if you want, you can kind of go on the other side here and wrap it around again. and just kind of do the same thing. Let me move my hand out of the way and do the same thing on this side. 
and that's just going to help with the placement of everything. Okay, and that looks pretty level to me, or pretty even. Close enough, and I think that's all we're really aiming for. So, uh, next step here is, well, we can kind of start putting, sorry, I got a little gnat or something flying around buzzing my head. Um, we're gonna start by applying, uh, let me get my dowels out. We're gonna start by applying the bottommost band to kind of cover up the brown uh, so it doesn't show through as much. What I'm gonna do is take my take this band and just run it through my dowel here just to kind of give it a little bit of a curve. Okay, especially around the edge. We want it to wrap nicely. Okay. And we're gonna just wrap it around the cone and glue it to itself like that. Okay, make sure that it's nice and flush with the bottom, just like that. Get your glue out. Let me move this out of the way. So you can see a little more contrast there. Get my glue ready. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of a little bit of glue right at the end of this little strip here. It doesn't matter which side. Ultimately they're just gonna overlap anyway, so. Nice and all the way out to that edge. Okay, and then take this and make sure that you've got it nice and flush with the bottom and just connect it. There we go. Okay, and it really shouldn't slide off because of, uh, because the side is, you know, not as wide, so it shouldn't slide off. I don't think you really need to put glue around the whole thing. You should be able to just keep it like that and it should stay for you, okay? So there's our first little layer, just to kind of cover up the bottom, okay? And it's gonna go relatively quick after, obviously after you get all your inking and stuff done. Okay, now we're gonna start with our first layer here. You'll notice that one of these little strips has a little score mark right there, okay? And what that is, is that's just to help you um, understand where to connect the other one, okay? So that's gonna connect like that. And then wherever this one ends up is fine, but this is where these two need to join, okay? We're gonna put one on at a time, I think. Okay, so first thing we need to do uh, before we actually put this on is we want to actually curl these kind of in so they're kind of shaped uh, like a, I don't know, like an upside down U or an N, I think is the best way to describe it. So they're kind of um, curling down. And the reason for that is we want it to kind of hug the cone. So you see that this one's flat and this one is kind of hugging the cone. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so just take your dowel and just kind of train the outer portions of our leaves like this. You can just curl them in like that. Just train the paper like that. Okay, and then ultimately what we're gonna do is we are gonna flare this out a little bit, just this piece. Okay, and what we wanna do is just get this glued on using that little guide there. And you know what, actually, I think it may be a good idea. I'm just gonna slip this off, it's connected here. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of glue on this, just in some random spots so it doesn't move, because it is moving on me. So let's just do that. That's all you need. And then just slide it on and give it a good little push so that it adheres to our cone, and then we know, don't worry about it sliding off. It wouldn't fall down, but I guess it is kind of moving around, so we're just gonna, we're gonna adhere that to our little cone here. Okay, so now each layer is gonna go slightly below the little marker. Okay, so you wanna make sure you don't get it over it. 
you want it just basically nudged up right against that marker. So let's go ahead and get our glue on this first strip. If you want to use hot glue, you can. I don't really like to use hot glue. I think there was an actual discussion about that somewhere, maybe in our group, about not liking hot glue. But just take your time and just wrap it around. Make sure that you are wrapping it right around or underneath that little line that we just created. Okay, and just hold that in place for just a moment while it sets. Okay, these individual ones are gonna go in between these. But this is just to kind of help with spacing and placement. It's gonna make your life so much easier. And it's gonna make everything look really pretty. Okay, so just be patient while that sets. All right, and then again, <clears throat> on this one here, remember we have that little marker. Okay, so this piece here, we wanna make sure that when we glue it on, it stays right on that little marker. And then wherever this one ends up is totally fine. Okay, so let's put, let's put some glue on this little marker area. Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. I gotta curl these first. And it may also help to kind of train the band a little bit so that it assumes a nice round shape. Okay, but let's go ahead and curl the Curl these outer parts of this um, oak leaf inward, okay, just like that, so it kind of hugs the cone, like that, and then you can kind of flare the tip out a little bit. All right, so let's get this guy here, put a little bit of glue just before that little mark there. Okay, so again, throwing a little bit of glue just before that little score mark. Let's get our glue on the band here. Get it right out to that edge too. And we'll connect this one so it butts up right against that little score mark on there. And then just wrap it around using that little line to help guide you. Make sure it's nice and tight or taut. There we go. And that looks pretty even Steven. So we are doing a good job so far. Okay, and once this is all in place here and once everything is nice and dry, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of flare some of this out a little bit more to give it some dimension. You can always do that after everything is said and done. In, in all honesty, I don't think it really matters. Okay, so there's our, there's our band. Okay, now with this guy here, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the individual leaves on and just like we did with the ones on the strips, we do need to curl these lengthwise in the center, okay? And then once we get them on, you can kind of take and flare some of the tips out. I guess you can do that now. Some of the outer extremes here, we can curl those out, but overall, the leaf does need to be kind of curved so that it hugs the actual uh, cone itself. Okay, so that's kind of what we're, what we're after. All right, so let's get that glued into place. And then again, um, just like we've done in the past with other arrangements that we've done, um, you can always go in and finesse things. And when you're putting this on, make sure you get it nice and centered. Uh, as you're putting it on with the oak leaf, you're going to see like some triangles here that are going to be formed from both of them or from all the uh, little leaves put together there. Just try to make sure that they're kind of symmetrical and same in size. And that's going to make sure that you get it nice and centered, okay? And then, of course, the top of this little square area that we're gluing down, just make sure that's nice and flush with the band, and that's gonna help with the horizontal um, leveling, so to speak. Okay, so just give that a good push and let that kind of hold, and that'll dry. I don't think we need to really overly obsess too much about it. And then just continue on with the next one. So let's kind of just curl the inside here so it hugs the cone 
and then we can take and just flare the tips out a little bit in various directions. Give it a little interest. Okay. And get our glue on this little square area here at the top of the leaf. And glue the next one in place here. Again, just making sure that it's nice and centered. Give it a good push. And there we go. And moving right along. So I'm gonna repeat that process two more times with our mighty oak leaf from the mighty oak tree. And just curl those out. Now this, once again, I think the assembly on this is actually very straightforward. And it really gives you the ability to have fun with inks and colors and all sorts of fun stuff to really give it that, give it that look. I have a feeling that everybody's everybody's vision so to speak of um, of fall is different maybe you know there's specific colors that speak to you more than others so you know don't be afraid to add your your own personal touch add your own meaning to the project you know, the idea overall is to kind of create a uh, a gradient. So we're going to go from like a, a, a greenish yellow all the way up to a, a deep purple. And um, that's kind of what we're after in this project. But I have a feeling that, you know, some people may want to, and you're more than welcome to do this. You know, I personally, <clears throat> if I, if and when I remake one of these, I think what I would do is and I talked about this just a few minutes ago, make a version that is reminiscent of the Autumn Blaze and just do the whole thing like that. I think that'd be really cool. Okay, so let me make sure that looks level. It does, looks pretty good. Okay. Now, if you find that once everything is said and done that these leaves are kind of sticking up too much, you can always kind of pull this back and put a little bit of glue kind of right towards the top so it sits more flush up against the uh, the cone. But I kind of, I think so far it's pretty good. I really like how it's turning out. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. And then if I have to, I guess I could always go in later on and just throw a little extra glue in there. But I'm very happy with, um, with how it looks right now. So I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, layer two is, and again, this is why this is helpful. These stencils here, it's got a number two on it. So that is my second layer. That's these guys. <clears throat> okay, and they're gonna go here. And again, you wanna make sure that you're offsetting everything. Okay, so the ones on the bands, they're gonna be in line with each other. Okay, so these are gonna go here like that so that they're nice and Nice and centered there. Yep. Okay. All right, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna curl this, the actual band itself. And then I'm gonna take and curl these leaves back a little bit so that they wrap around our cone nicely. That's all it really takes. It's just a little wrap around. This is a 3 8 inch dowel. Uh, this is, I go to this thing a lot, actually. And I'm gonna kind of flare the tip out a little bit. All right, let's get our, oh, oh by the way, again, I wanna make sure that we are conscious of which of these has that little cut in it so we know where to overlap it. Okay, it's right there on this one. Okay, so you know what? Let's put this one down first the one that has the little score mark on the little band here. I'm gonna put that one down first. And let's curl these leaves in. Okay. And I'm gonna flare this out. All right, 
So again, this is the one that has the little score mark in there. Let's get our glue on the band. And again, you're welcome to use hot glue if you want. Because of the, um, you know, this is kind of like a, it's paper based. And again, I'm taking this leaf that and lining it up with the other leaf from below that was on the band. Okay, keeping it just underneath that line. Trying to make sure that it's nice and level. There we go. That's looking really neat. Yeah, and that actually, that actually sticks really quick. Okay, so here's the score mark here. So we're gonna take this one and we're gonna connect it. And we're gonna make sure that the score mark matches up right with where that band is and get that glued down. Okay, let's get our glue on the band. Overlap it slightly to meet up with that other little score mark on the first band. And then keep that right underneath that little line that we drew. And over here, it's gonna overlap slightly. And that's totally good. And you can see that these leaves that were on the bands from the previous layer are all lined up correctly. Okay, there we go. That looks good. There we go. Look at that. It's looking awesome. All right, so now let's grab the individual ones here. And, oops, curling it the wrong way. I'm gonna curl it in like that. And now here on the tips, I'm just gonna flare the tips out a little bit more than the other one. So the, the center part of it is round, but the outer parts are kind of flared out. And that's just to keep it hugging the cone, but also to add a little bit of interest. All right, so here, let's make sure that we get it nice and centered. And kind of push that down. This is gonna be really cool. Super cool. Okay, that works. And once you, this part's gonna go together real quick too. Kind of excited to see what this is all gonna look like. And again, just kind of curling, curling the ends. That's gonna have a more pronounced curl. That's gonna go like that. I'm just trying to be random with it. Okay. And get that nice and centered onto the band. And give it a push. Really cool. Look at that. Okay, next one. All right, I gotta stop, stop showing off my work here and actually get some work done. All right, let's curl that out, curl that, curl that. Glue, and right in the center. And let's see how that looks. There we go. Super cool. And the next one. What a gorgeous little project. I bet if you, you went to Michael's or somewhere and wanted to buy something like this, I guarantee it would probably cost you 40, 50 bucks, maybe more. I've seen some of their, their floral and I'm impressed by it, but I always say, when I see that stuff, I'm like, I can make that or something similar to it anyway. There we go. Look at that. That's coming out really cool. All right, next layer here is layer three. Let's find our layer three. This is our layer three. So that matches up with this. All right, let's grab the bands first and let's find the one with the little score mark. Mine's a little harder to find because I embossed it, but it's here. The score marks on this side here. Okay, so let's give the band a little curl slightly. And then also, of course, let's train the actual leaves so that they're more round. Otherwise they kind of tend to stick out a little too much. And then let's curl the tip. Let's go that way on this one. Okay, and glue on the band. 
again, you want to make sure that you match these leaves up with the leaves on the previous strip. Okay, and just try to get that nice and centered if you can. Just right underneath that little mark that we created. Try to keep it nice and level. And let's scooch that over just a tiny bit. Keep it nice and centered. And nudge that down just a bit. I think I was going a little too high with that. There we go. Okay. And let's grab our other band. And again, we need to make sure that we connect it right up against that little score mark on the first set with the band. And let's train those leaves, make them round. There we go. Get our glue on. Okay, and again, let's connect that right up to that score mark. Keep it nice and level and just wrap it around. And then again, it's gonna terminate on top of itself, on the other side, on top of the other strip. That looks good. I don't think I flared those out. Let me just grab it by where it's glued down. Where'd it go? There it is. I'm just gonna take this and train it out a little bit. This one's kind of looking kind of flat. There we go. Okay, on to the individual leaves. Just give them a little train. And I can make this a little more pronounced and have it curl out even more, even the sides too. Just as long as that center part is nice and curved. All right, throw a little glue on your little square area. Get that nice and centered. And push. Okay, next one. <clears throat> and train that. Train that a little bit. There we go. There we go. It's looking sharp. All right, we have two more of these to go. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, okay. So I'm just kind of wrapping the paper around the dowel while applying just a tiny little bit of pressure and then again, just kind of curling, curling the sides a little bit, just to kind of make them stick, stick out a bit. We don't want the whole leaf sticking out, but we do want to add a little bit of dimension to the project by just kind of finessing some things here and there. Okay, there we go. Oops, a little glue on my thumb there. There we go, that's looking sharp. Okay, next one, yeah, we're almost done here. It's really moving along. And just try to be as random as you can with all this. There we go. Look at that. That is looking B-A. All right, next layer, let's take a look here. I think that is layer four. There's four little lines in a circle. It's like an O, but there's four. Uh, so that is our next layer, it's this guy here. So now we only have one band, and this band should go all the way around. And we'll train the band first, and then let's kind of train the leaves in, kind of make them a little more round. You can probably just stick the dowel right in the center and just wrap it around like that. Make quicker work of it. There we go, that worked. And then I'm gonna take these tips and just flare them out 
in various directions. There we go. And there we go. Okay, and again, you want to line up these with the bottom or the layer below that that had the little band. Again, try to keep it just below that little indicator line that we drew and just wrap it around. Make sure it's nice and straight and level. Give it a little nudge if you need to bring it up a tad. There we go. Look at that. Okay. And let's give that a little push. <clears throat> All right. Now let's grab the individual leaves here. And again, I'm just going to pop that right into the dowel and just kind of go like that. And now with these, I'm not sure there's much you're going to be able to do with these as far as training. You can try to train the little individual little ridges there, but I think that's fine. And again, we can always go back in and finesse some things here and there if we feel that we want to do that. So I'm popping this one right in the middle, right in the center of the other two that were on the band. There we go. All right, next one. Flare that tip out like that. Let me just bring some of these out a little bit. There we go. A couple more for this color and then uh, just got two more layers they're gonna go pretty quick and we have a little pedestal for this project that we're gonna make now I could see just making that actually without the pedestal that's really cool actually just on its own so uh, but we did include a really pretty little pedestal that you can uh, create to put this thing on. That's really pretty. Okay, last red one here. Now see, the red ones are, well, maybe they're sticking out a little bit too much. I might wanna just put a little dot of glue right up here, just to kind of hold it more flush up against the project. But I think with time, I think it'll settle in a little bit. There's a lot going on under it, and maybe that's why it's kind of being pushed out a little bit. But uh, either way, I, I wouldn't get too picky about it because, I mean, take a look at the forest floor. It's, you know, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful chaos, I guess. There we go. How cool is that? All right, next layer here. This is layer five. So on your little thing here, there's four little marks in a circle and then a one to the left of it. That is your fifth layer here. That's this guy here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and curve the band. And then also just take and curl the leaf around this. I'm gonna curl it nice and snug completely around. It's a small piece, so should be fine. Like that. There we go. And let's give the tips a little bit of life. There we go. All right, so this is our last, this is the last little band that has a little line. The other one is just gonna go right above that. Oh. Hold on a second, I'm gonna match that up with the 
the previous band. Let's get that all the way around following that little guide that we drew. That's a very common size little cone here, so you should be able to pretty much find this anywhere. Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, online. Okay, there we go. And that's nice. All right, on to the individual ones, just like I did with the, uh, the ones that were grouped. I'm just gonna go ahead and just wrap this completely around the dowel. It's the perfect size. This is a 3 8 inch dowel for this little application here. Okay, and I'm gonna really accentuate these here and curl these out a good amount. Because you want it you want it flat up against the cone, but you also want it to kind of slope out a bit. And you guys are gonna really love diving into this project. Okay. So again, just kind of match uh or not match up, but find that little center line or find the center point in between those leaves and get that glued down. And the next one. Get sandwiched right in the center there. There we go. I'm just kind of squeezing all four of them now, just to make sure they're staying in place. And there we go. Okay, all right, so we've got this little guy here. He's just gonna wrap around and we'll take our dowel, start giving this thing a nice cone shape. Okay, there's a little tab here and that's where it should meet, basically. Um, so, and I think the best thing to do with this is to actually put some glue on this tab and glue the other side to it. And then we're just gonna kinda, we're gonna put some glue on the inside of this and then just slip it over. We don't really need to know, we don't have a guide for this one. The guide is basically where it finds its home because of the inability for it to move any, any, any more down. Or does that even make any sense? It'll find its home based on its inability to slide down any further, how about that? All right, let's curl these out just like that. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the inside, just a nice little ring. I don't think it really matters where it goes as long as it makes contact with this guy. And again, make sure that these line up with the ones that were on the band. And just get that down until it's nice and snug, like so. Get it nice and centered all the way around. There we go, and we can flare them out. Not too much, just a tad. There we go. Okay, and last but not least, we've got some gold foil that we're going to finish this thing off with. So we need to, there's a little uh, tab here. I'm gonna glue this to itself again. Now this is a white core glitter, so I'm going to pull out one of my, where are you, mister? 
Uh, there it is. I've got some, I've got some gold ink. I'm just gonna hit this, hit this white core with a little bit of gold ink, just to hide that white. There we go. Okay. Uh, might want to take this and wrap it a little bit more. Like really get it trained into a nice circle. Let me try to wrap this a little bit better. I'm just trying to make it round so it doesn't crease and that should work. And now this is this part. If you're using gold at the top, uh, you have to be a little bit more patient gluing this to itself because foil typically can be a little more difficult to work with. Okay, so just try to make that a cone as best as you can and hold that while it dries. And then we're just gonna pop that right on top to close off this shape. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use one of my leaves here to get a little more glue into this little area that's peeling back. It's just a tight little roll. So there's a little bit of resistance there and it wants to kind of peel back, but we'll get it. Okay, so just kind of hold that in place. It kind of helps to stick your finger in there a little bit. Okay, there we go. And now while it's really starting to take, I'm kind of, uh, kind of pushing down on this and kind of trying to make it more round. And then eventually once we actually put it on top, it will, it'll take on more of a round shape, but just being very patient while this glue sets on this, on this uh, foil. And I think we just about got it. Let's see what happens here. There we go, look at that. Nice little cap to the top of the project. Okay. And I would probably glue that down. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is put together the little pedestal that we've created for our beautiful little topiary. And we're gonna start by just assembling the middle part, okay? And all you wanna do is just fold everything at the score marks and get some glue on this tab here. And I'm gonna spread that out get it all the way up to the very edge there. And then just go ahead and take the other side, line it up nicely and precisely. And you can actually, if you want, you can put this down on your surface to get some added pressure there. Just make sure it sits nice and flat. That will ensure that you've got it nice and lined up. Okay, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna create all three of these sections and then we're gonna join them all together. The tabs on all of these pieces are gonna be pointing downward. Okay, so let's let that kind of set for a minute. And this is gonna be our bottom, this is gonna be our top. So go ahead and begin by folding everything at the tabs here. And let's get our little, or fold at the score lines, I mean, and then also fold the tabs at the score marks as well. There we go. And all we're gonna do here, these bottom tabs, we're gonna leave those to connect to this. All we're gonna do at this point is glue these tabs here on the side to their neighbors. Okay, so get some glue on there and work a little bit of that glue out to the very edge. And then just find the, find the angle that it needs to be at and just kind of connect those two sections together. And 
just be patient and give it a little squeeze here and there to make sure that it sets nicely. Just like that, okay. And then we can move on to our next tab here. And maybe just a little more glue there at the bottom. Spread that out. And fold this over and get that tab connected to right behind its little neighbor here. Bring that in, make sure that it's nice and aligned and give it a squeeze. Just like that. All right, moving right along. Next section here. And a tiny little line there. And let's bring that in. And I'm just kind of, I'm sandwiching the tab from this side and this piece between these two fingers. And I'm just kind of moving them up and down the seam here to kind of force it to grip as much of that paper as it can. It's pretty awkward. No, it's not too bad actually. Okay, there we go. Almost done. The pedestal goes pretty quick overall. There's not really much inking or anything that you need to do, um, except for on the little panels if you want. I just, I hit it with some ink because I figured we pretty much inked everything else. So I may as well kind of have some continuity there and maintain that effect throughout the entire project. But that's up to you. Whatever you want to do, whatever your heart desires, and give it whatever look you want. Oh, by the way, I really think that this thing would be cool for Halloween too. Done up in all black, every single leaf black. That would be cool. I'd probably uh, do the veining in like a white or a gray and grab some white ink and ink everything in a white, maybe with a red cap or a purple cap. I think that would be really cool. And then the pedestal, obviously, that is, that you could do pretty much anything with. All right, now this one here, since we're closing this up, I'm gonna put some glue on here. It might be kind of tough to get back in there later. So we may need to kind of do two at a time here, which is fine. Totally doable. Let's, uh, let's do this one first, since there's less glue on it. So I'm gonna shift over to this side real quick. I put more glue on that side. It'll take longer for it to dry. So I have a little more time to get to that side here. I'll do this side first. There we go. And now bring this over, get it nice and lined up and squeeze. Now, if you need to like grab a dowel or something, if you can't get your fingers in there, that's fine too, but I think I think you should be okay. All right, so this structure looks great. We've got it nice and built. Now we can take these tabs and flare them out. I'm going to let this set for a bit before I start. Well, what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this and we're gonna pop it in here and glue it to this piece to kind of create this, this pedestal effect looking thing here. But let's leave that alone for now. And let's move on to this guy here. So we'll start by just folding everything at the score marks. This is our bottom. Okay. And there's a tab here. And then there's kind of like two areas of tabs down here because we've got a little uh, vertical piece here that we're gonna decorate with a little piece of gold, some gold foil. Okay. There we go. Just like 
that. Get everything nice and folded. Okay, so only thing we need to do is connect these little triangular tabs to their neighbors and it's gonna go like this. Okay, so that's gonna be pretty straightforward. So we don't need a lot of glue here, just a tiny bit will do. Try to get it right up to that very edge and just fold that over. Make sure it's nice and lined up and give it a squeeze. Now again with this, less is more. So don't overdo it with the glue on this. And just hold that in place until it sets. Should go pretty quick. There we go. Like I said. All right, next one. And I'm just going to dab that to thin it out and get it out to the edge. And then bring this in. Probably flare these bottom tabs out. Just make sure that you get that nice and aligned. Okay. Kind of squeezing, pushing in, or this way with my with this thumb here, and I've got one finger back here, and I'm just applying pressure between those two little seams there. Okay, next one, and I'm just going to dab that. Okay, bring that in. go just give it a squeeze let that set there we go and that's a little tougher to get out of the way get that in there fold that over and just connect those two sides. Just find whatever's comfortable for you, whatever angle, whatever finger you need to use to get those little sections to hold. Okay. And again, it's such a small little area that you don't even, it should, should dry really quick barely need to use any glue at all. Now wouldn't that be cool <clears throat> if there was some kind of paper that you didn't even need to use glue with. You could just connect it and it would stay. There's an invention. I don't have to work on that. Okay. There we go. And last one here. We've got two tabs that we need to connect. We need to connect the large one. I'm going to do the large one first. So let's get our glue on this tab. Nice little line right out to the edge. Spread that out. Okay. And I'll just connect that. Make sure you get it nice and lined up. Like that. You guys have really been rocking these projects from what I've been seeing in the group on Facebook. I think that now that you've got your feet wet and you've made projects in the past, I think each one just gets easier and easier. I know you guys have definitely built up some confidence and it really shows in your work. I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. <clears throat> All right, so last one here, get that glued into place. And I think I accidentally ripped that one off. So be careful not to do that. I just made a little boo-boo, but that's okay, I'm human. We make mistakes and we learn from them. Okay, so that one looks like it's in place. Now this, I'm gonna have to put the glue in from the inside so that I don't tear it. 
and that's fine too. Whatever works. Get that lined up, and I'm gonna need to hold this one in place for a few extra seconds. Okay, so now all the pieces are, well, the main structural pieces are all put together. Okay, so, all right, so let's leave this sit so that it can really, um, you know, really set nicely. We'll come back to this, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick these tabs in here, and we're gonna glue them to the inside wall of this piece here. Okay, so what I wanna do, let me clean off the tip here. What I wanna do is begin by just working on one tab here, because I wanna anchor it, and don't get the glue up too high on this tab, okay, because otherwise the glue may kind of, um, leak out a little bit and make it unsightly. But so you can see the glue there. I'm lining up one of the walls with one of these sections here. And I just want to get that in there as flush as possible and just squeeze that tab up against the inner wall of this piece here. Okay, so we have one side connected. And now all we need to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump over to the opposite side and get some glue on this tab here. Okay, so we're gonna put glue on this other side here on the complete opposite side. And then I'm gonna pop that over, making sure that all the tabs are underneath this piece here and get it nice and flush Make sure all the tabs are tucked under. And just grab that tab and just glue it to the inside wall of this piece here. The rest of the glue is gonna need to go in from the inside because obviously this thing's not gonna move around anymore, but that's totally fine. Okay, so that's in place now. Again, we're gonna go from the inside here. You should be able to see, well, let me see if you can, there you go. You can see the little tab there. I kind of pulled it out so you could see it. We're gonna put glue right on that tab, just a little bit. Don't need a lot. And just push that to the inside of the wall on this piece, just like that. And that should have a good grip. Next one here, you can see the little tab there, I think. There it is. And there we go. Just throwing a little bit of glue right on there. And just push that right on there. We got two left. There's the other one there, you can see it. You'll really be able to see it once I get the glue on there. There it is. And just pushing that up against the inner wall of this vertical piece here. Give it a little squeeze. Okay, and the last one. <clears throat> there we go. And that is a job well done. Okay, everything looks pretty pristine. Nicely done. Okay, so this is our top. Again, let's not forget that. And now we're gonna take this and we're gonna glue it to this piece here. And then we can put the bottom on. I didn't wanna put the bottom on this yet because we need to get our fingers in here so that we can glue this in place. Okay, so let me take that off for a second. Let's put glue on one tab here. Doesn't matter which one, any one will do. Okay, don't need, to, don't need to get it all the way up to that seam there, that's fine. I don't want that glue squirting out. And let's fold these tabs in and let's grab one tab and just connect it and get it glued to the wall of this part here. Make sure you get it nice and lined up. There we go. like that and then we can go over to the opposite side and get our glue on this tab 
I'm going to kind of dab that a little bit, put a little bit too much on there. And just connect that to that wall. Make sure you get it nice and aligned. There you can see what I just did there. Just glued that tab right to that piece there. And then just have to finish up the rest of them. There's four here. Let me bring this down a little bit. Okay. There we go. That's nice. And it goes pretty quick too. Okay. Next tab. Just like that. There we go. And we're going to be putting panels on this. So if you do happen to get a little bit of glue here or there, it's not the end of the world. Okay. And the last one here. Oh, well, there's two. Sorry. And get that in place. Like so. Just like that. And last but not least. Got this guy here, and that is nice. Okay, and that looks nice and level. Everything looks wonderful. Okay, so you can fold these tabs in. Now, you've got two pieces that look like this. I've labeled these because I've already kind of made sure that I got the right one. One's going to go on top, and it's going to cover up this little uh, accent piece. Uh, and the, the one that goes on the bottom is the exact size of the bottom. The one that goes on top is ever so slightly smaller. So kind of put them right next to each other. Find the smaller one. The smaller one's gonna go on top. We need the bigger one for the bottom. So B for bigger, I labeled it. I put that, that's the bigger one. That goes on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get glue on one of these tabs. And this is going to be our anchor tab. I'm going to get that glue right out to the very edge. We want a nice, beautiful, crisp seam there at the bottom. Make sure you got the one with the B on it. You can write on it because no one's going to see it once everything's glued into place. And just get that first one aligned nicely. That's going to set the tone for the rest of them. Make sure you get it right out to the very edge there. Okay, and then once you do, you kind of lift it up. And give it a squeeze just like that and let's see how that sits that sits nicely there we go okay give it a good squeeze there all right now uh, we are going to have to glue all of these at the same time which is fine it's not a big deal get a nice line of glue there in the center and then i'm going to do one more right out to the very edge and I'm gonna spread that thin all the way around. And this is gonna to go together perfectly. I got a feeling that we're gonna rock this project. There we go. All right, so grab a finger or a piece of paper, whatever it is that you use to, you know what, I need a little bit more over here. Spread that thin. There we go. And you know what? This is going to be the bottom. So even if it's not your best work, it's okay. No one's really going to see it because it'll be covered up. But we like to try to be as precise as we can. Okay, so I've kind of flared the tabs out. So as I'm pushing down, it grabs more of that surface area. And then what you want to do is just kind of run your finger along the very edge of this. And in some areas, you may need to kind of push that wall in a little bit. As you're pushing it in, run your finger along the top to make sure that it's getting a hold on the glue. There we go. Work your way all the way around. Okay, so the majority of our pedestal is complete. It looks pretty level. I don't have a level to check it, but 
All right, so let's go ahead and put our little accent pieces in place here. There's a center part, and then there's two little triangular parts. And the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to glue the uh, we're going to glue the center down first, and then glue the top and bottom down. And I believe that these are symmetrical. I'm going to double check here real quick just to be sure. And they are okay. So, but there are a few pieces that have a little cutout um, for a leaf. So we want to make sure that we put those in the right place. They're going to alternate. So we're going to have a solid one followed by one with the leaf and so on and so forth. All right. So let's get our glue onto the center one here. And I think I probably went a little heavy on that, but I do want to try to get it out to the very edge. Okay. So let's pop that down and get that nice and centered right in the center there. Just like that. Okay, that's gonna kind of stabilize this thing too and make it a little more sturdy. And if you need to, take a little dowel and just kind of push right up against that little crease there to make sure that the glue <clears throat> right there in that little creased area grips nicely. Okay, and that looks perfect. Okay, so then we can go ahead and get our glue on the rest of this. Try to work that glue out to the very edge as well. Okay, and then push that down like so. And just kind of hold the ends here. That's the most important part. As long as this area here holds, the rest of it should hold just fine. Okay, and then we can flip it over, lift up the bottom part here, and get our glue on this guy. And fold that down. And just hold that in place. I'm kind of pushing up on it a little bit. Okay, and if you have any excess glue there, just kind of get it out with your fingernail or your finger, whatever it takes. Okay, so there you go. So far, so good. So again, uh, what you're gonna do is with the ped pedestal part here, the leaf is gonna go on the center section and on the top section. Okay, so you'll notice that there is a tiny little score mark here. Make sure that you get it scored correctly and then score that part. And we're gonna glue that part right in the center there, just like that. And we're gonna repeat that and they're gonna alternate. So if you get it, you can go ahead and skip ahead or I think this is probably a good time for me to ramble because this is a pretty monotonous little thing that we're doing here. But uh, I know that south of the hemisphere right now, you guys are going into spring. And I don't know if that really means much to people in Australia because you guys pretty much, I think you have warm weather for the most part. Maybe some of the southern areas, not so much, but um, up here, north of the equator, especially in the Midwest, East Coast, Northwest, we are gearing up for uh, apple season and cherry season and I don't know, I don't know about cherry season, I think, um, but I always look forward to it. I think what happens is I kind of I don't know if I'm totally always excited about uh, summer coming. I love spring, and then I kind of am not so sure about summer. Um, once it happens, oh, by the way, also, real quick, you want to make sure that the leaf part is on the top and middle section. This is the bottom, the little area that has the little lip here, not lip, but just the vertical area, that's the bottom, so make sure you don't flipped around. Anyway, um, but yeah, summer, sometimes I just dread 
the humidity and the heat and having to be in the air conditioning all the time. And then I think right around the middle of July, you get used to it. And I think as, as I get older, I start to remember just how, pardon my French, but crappy the winter can get because it lasts so long around here. And I kind of start to embrace it more and appreciate it especially because it's a little more tolerable knowing that fall is imminent. So it kind of works out. <clears throat> All right, so you see what we have going there. It's a nice pretty uh, purple and green combination there. And again, now we're just gonna alternate and go back to the solid one. Get that in between the one with the little leaf and get that glued down. And then after that, we've got just a few more little pieces to glue down and we'll be done with this project. So definitely, um, you know, uh, a little weekend project or, I, I mean, it shouldn't take you more than, I'd say a total of, uh, I don't know, three or four hours, I think, depending on how intense you get with all the inking and stuff. But I'm excited and I love, I tend to, want to take more time and really enjoy my crafting more when I craft for fall <clears throat> and Halloween. Just get that right into that crack there. A little crevice. Okay, that's pretty good. And let's get the next little section glued down. Just little bits of glue, you don't need a ton. And if you find that, or if you see that you maybe have way too much that's gonna kind of seep out once you push it, just dab it and flatten it out a little bit and then it won't come squirting out. There we go. But I am excited to, and I should have done this a long time ago. I always wait to the last minute, but actually this is a good little topic of conversation and maybe uh, can get some comments <clears throat> in the comment section here on YouTube. But being in the Midwest, and again, this applies to people that are in Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, mostly. Those are probably the three places that I will venture to in the fall. But if you live in any of those places and you know a really cool place to um, maybe rent a cabin or, you know, a little lake house or something, um, leave a comment or email me using the contact form and tell me about it. Because I'm always looking for, I'm always looking for cool little areas. Um, I have some customers that, that know me that know that I'm constantly, one of my hot spots is um, the Manaqua area in northern Wisconsin, way up north. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it up there this year because of a wedding that takes place right during what is usually the peak leaf season there. So I may have to go down south a little bit more. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe Door County, but if you have, if you have some ideas or if you have a little tidbit, a little diamond in the rough, uh, or if you have a lake house for rent, <laughs> let me know. I'd love to rent it. I just wanna just get away for three or four days and see some of the fall colors in one of my favorite states, whether it be Michigan or Wisconsin. Those are kind of my homes away from home probably will end up retiring there one day, I bet. Because I'm, I'm not a city guy at all. I love people, but uh, I don't like being around a little. I don't mind crowds either, but I can only handle so much of it. I know a lot, a lot of you probably feel the same way. Otherwise, you wouldn't be crafting. You'd probably be who knows what, skydiving or something, something crazy, which I would never do, by the way. 
All right, so just again, starting in the center and then just doing each individual little section here one at a time, taking my time, enjoying the process. You know, if I, if I could and you didn't hear it, I probably, just to get in the spirit right now, I'd turn on a little, little Vince Guaraldi, jam out to some music or uh, I'm excited for Halloween as well. We've got a lot of cool Halloween stuff coming out pretty soon. And if that is your season, like it is mine, then stay tuned because we have some goodies for you. It's always fun to craft for Halloween. All right, so <clears throat> I'm, I think I'm kind of lollygagging here and I'm going a little slow, but I just want, this is gonna be on my table and I want it to be perfect. So I'm just really taking my time and making sure that I get everything just right and I don't make a mess. And I don't get my glue everywhere, except for on my fingers and under my table, which is where it goes when I get it on my finger. Okay, just get that nice and centered. There we go. Grab that dowel and just kind of help it grip right up to that very edge so you don't have that little area popping off there. Okay, perfect. So we got this one and one more to go. And then we put our little lip on, our little decorative little lip and a liner. And we are, oh, we've got a few more things here. It's not bad though. But <clears throat> back to fall. Another thing too, I'd love to know, what was your most memorable fall experience? Where did you go and what did you see? And uh, tell me about it. One of my favorite things in the world to do is just research places to go and visit and kind of um, you know see what the areas look like. And uh, I'll go on like Google Maps and look at the pictures. I really love old towns that have, um, you know, cute shops and stuff and just uh, old cemeteries, old buildings. I've had a couple conversations with some customers telling them that for some reason, I think I lived a past life on the East Coast, somewhere in the Boston area maybe uh, somewhere in Massachusetts, maybe even, I don't know. But I always feel very, just kind of gravitate towards the East Coast for some reason. I think I'd fit in. All right. Okay, almost done there. Got one last one here with our little leaf and um, I'm getting there. Can't wait to see your guys' version of this. The pedestal, obviously, um, well, I guess that is gonna be, it'll vary from person to person as well because we're not all gonna use the same patterns, but I'm really curious to see what you guys do with the, with the leaves because there's uh, so many ways to dress them up, so to speak. All right, let me make sure that I'm putting my leaf on correctly. The leaf should be facing down, and it is. Let me get that center part in place. Oops. There we go. Come on. Center, center, center. There we go. That's it. Okay, I'll grab my dowel. Just give that a nudge. Okay. And a beautiful little piece. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. That's a cool looking little pedestal. That could actually be used for a lot of things, but Do 
just like that. And there we go. Hey Siri, how many days until Halloween? Oh geez, we're getting close. All right, so that's done. Uh, I guess while we're working on this, uh, well, let's do, let's put the little liner on the bottom. We've got some gold trim here. There's two parts of it, they're exactly the same. And what you wanna do is just fold them at the score mark. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the center. And I'm just gonna just kind of Put a little bit of glue here and there, especially some in the little close to the areas where it folds. You don't need to put a ton on there. If you put too much on there, it's going to squirt out. But get that nice and centered right on the base here. And get it, get it on there. Give it a second to set. And then you can wrap the rest of it around. I'm going to pull this back. And just make sure you get some glue right out to the very edge there. And just a little tiny line there like that. And center it nicely. There we go. So that's going to coordinate nicely with the little gold cap on the little topiary. Okay, there we go. And last one here. A lot of things are squeaking here today in the studio. I think it might be because the humidity is finally going away and things are drying up ever so slightly. All right, so there's that last one. Should fit like a glove, nice and perfect and precise, right up to that edge. Now look at that, that looks really pretty. Okay. There we go, all right, and we're gonna do the same thing with our other strip, if I can find it. Where'd you go, Mr. Strip? Hello? Oh no. I think I lost my other strip. Well, dang it. There it was. It was kind of blending in to the table here. All right, so again, just kind of fold at the score mark. Uh, the eclipse sometimes it doesn't make straight score marks. I don't know why, but that's fine. All right, so let's glue the center down, just like we did the first time. I'm gonna spread that a little thinner. Okay, find our center here. Get that nice and centered as well. That looks good. Give it a little push. There we go. Just hold that in place for a sec. And then you can kind of fold it over. Make sure you get that glue right out to the edge of that one there so that it doesn't come flying off. And that should meet nice and pretty flush there, close enough. And hold that down for a sec. Okay, last section here. Bottom will be done. We just gotta get our lip on and we have some little veins for these little leaves here. So we'll get those in place as well. And we'll be all set. There we go. Okay, just press that down gently. That's beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at we have these little veins here. There's a little score mark in the center because that's gonna go right in the center, okay? So just use the score mark as your guide to get it nice and centered. I'm just gonna pop just a few little drops of glue onto this. It's a very delicate little piece. Make sure you get that glue out to those little tips so that those stay nicely in place for us. Okay, and I'm just gonna dab that. Grab it from the bottom, maybe. And just use that little score mark as a guide. 
get it nice and centered. There we go. So you can see what that's supposed to look like. All right. Okay, let's just wrap these up here. And we'll put our little accent piece on top and we'll call it a day. This one's definitely, I got a feeling it's gonna be one of my, my favorite projects of all time. Okay, I'm just kind of grabbing it from the bottom there and popping it into place there like that. Nice little classy piece here. <clears throat> okay, last one. So one other thing too is when we finally get this in place uh, and go to put it all together, I'm gonna put a little moss onto the pedestal to kind of uh, give it a little more of a free flowing natural look. So it's not so stuffy, I guess. There we go, okay. All right, so that's that. So now what we have is this piece here, okay? And what you wanna do is we're gonna take this and we're, gl we're gonna glue this right up to the very edge of the top of our pedestal here, okay? So I, I, it doesn't really matter where you start. I'm just gonna start with one of the outer tabs here. Uh, I am gonna try to get that glue out to the very edge. Now this is kind of a, it's got a, got a bit of a foil texture to it, I think. So it may take a little bit longer to set, but it should be fine. Just make sure that you get it nice and aligned with the very edge there. Okay, might need to kind of nudge it ever so slightly to get it in the right spot. And then pull it out, make sure that the face of this thing is nice and flush with the face of the top of the pedestal. And then I'm just gonna kind of fold it over real quick and give it a little squeeze. Okay, then we can flare this out and get our glue on the next little section here. And just fold that over, get that glued in place. And I can take a dowel and really apply some nice pressure there to the very, very, very edge of that. See how that looks. That looks great. I'm gonna flare this out. And get some glue on the next tab here. Work that out to the edge. And get that in place. <clears throat> okay, so we've got half of it done here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this little tab over so what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this to that little tab. We could have connected this earlier. I don't think it really matters at this point. So just pop a little bit of glue on this little tab here on the end of our first section. And just go ahead and connect that to that section. I just thought it'd be easier to work with half of it, especially since we wanna make sure that we get everything nice and precisely aligned I'm just gonna hold that in place for a second to let that set. There we go. And give these a fold. Give 
to have a nice fold. And then there's one more tab on this side to connect that side to that side. Okay, so that is probably, that's strong enough. Good job, tab. All right, so let's get our glue on this next tab here. A little bit out to the edge. And I am going to spread that out to the very, very edge. And I'm going to thin that out a little bit. I went a little overboard. Okay. And get that nice and lined up. Right up to the very edge there. I'm going to grab my dowel. I can push down. There we go. Okay. Peel this back for a second. And let's get our glue on the next tab. There we go. Spread that thin. And pop that right in place. Should be precise and nice and exact. And it's kudos to, kudos to Ron for the beautiful design. Okay, so kudos to, kudos to Ron for the amazing design and to Diana for the immaculate precision on the engineering here and all this stuff came out beautifully. All right, so there's that last little section. We're going to get that in place, give it a good squeeze, make sure, make sure it's holding nicely. Okay, and then of course, to connect this here, we've got this one little tab here. I'm gonna just fold that back and just throw a little bit of glue on here and then connect it to the back side of its neighboring piece. Get rid of that excess glue. There we go. Okay, so we've got our beautiful little lip here. And what we're gonna do next is this piece is gonna go right in here. Should fit nice and snug. Okay, let's just throw a little, very thin line of glue around the perimeter here and then maybe just a little bit on the inside and just pop that in place to finish this off, make it look really nice. Well, there is our pedestal and here is our final little topiary. By the way, I added a little gold pearl to the tip of that. I just kind of glued that on there and uh, that's pretty much it. You're gonna pop that right onto the little pedestal here and there is your final little centerpiece i'm going to take a little bit of spanish moss and just kind of lay it down on the pedestal so that it's kind of around the perimeter and that should pretty much pretty much finish up the little project here so I hope you guys enjoyed crafting with me today. If you did, please take a moment to visit our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. I'm going to have to play with this a little bit. Actually, that's not too bad. I kind of like that. Um, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our projects. And if you do make this, please take a photo and post it in our group on Facebook. Uh, go to facebook.com and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group. Um, join the 6,000 plus members that we have there that are sharing their work on a daily basis. We'd love for you to join in. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you next time. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.